So as we enter the start of the 2035 season, hopefully this is a year where we can win the Norwegian title for the second time and continue to look good in Europe. This is just an intro. You better believe it. Jesus, that was bad. <sighs> yeah, welcome to the series. So welcome to the start of the 2035 season. We are going to recap the signings we have made and some of the youngsters I am looking at promoting through our club this season. Um, so we are going to start by some players who popped up on the end of last season's transfer list. So a couple of players have gone out on loan. First ones to mention are Croc has left us for Nice and Baloyi has left us as well. Um, just never, never became good players. So I've just let them go. But Nadinga has gone to Junkeren. We brought him in last season, if you remember, for 130k. And he went on loan to Sanders Ulf and had a really successful season for them. He's gone to Junkeren, who have won promotion to the top flight. Also joining him is Walmanes, who we signed a couple of years ago on a free transfer. And also Shitrit, the Israeli striker we signed. I've sent him on loan to Junkeren because I do think some top flight experience could be useful for him. So we'll see how he does. Um, a player who's left us as well, which is really upsetting because I did honestly think he could maybe become our first choice keeper, is Adam Hammer. He's gone to Benfica for 2 million plus 50% of next sale. I didn't want to sell him, but Benfica came in for a bid. And when I rejected it, he kicked off. He just said, look, I want to go. I don't want to stay. I said, what can I do to keep you around? Nothing. I want to go. So I've let him go. He had a really good season, as Strom Scott said, the season before, helping them gain promotion. I was willing to give him another season on loan there before he moved into Battle Hansen for our first team. But, yeah, unfortunately, he's ended up leaving. But... Let's go to the next season's transfers, and I'm going to apologise straight away because Pinker has left us. So let's go through the outs, shall we, first. First off, going on loan is one of the young um, Finnish central defenders we picked up. He's gone out on loan, but he's the big one. Pinker has gone for 18 million plus 50% of next sale. It's a big bit of money. We signed him, obviously, for a million. Um, sorry, two and a half million with Sam. I thought it was a million from Bran. Uh, two and a half million. He was always a really, look at that, always over sevens in the league. But he's now gone to Eintracht Frankfurt. Um, going out also on loan to Sweden is Moen, our young Norwegian striker. He's doing all right and hopefully he can have a good season. There. After two years at Arndal, he's been with us now for five years and just never featured in the first team, but... Hopefully he can continue to develop. Going on loan to Sundra. Sorry, to Garud is Sundra. And then finally, Aarons has gone to Harkin. Now, this is upsetting. I actually had a plan to start using him a bit more on the first team. But again, offers came in. And again, he thought it was time to leave. He didn't want to stick around. So we've ended up selling him. So Aarons has left. Now looking at the inns. A player who, about a year ago, I wanted to try to sign. We couldn't pick him up. But Jalo has come in from Sporting, now 18 years old. Picked up for 1.3 million. I think it's money well spent. He comes in to replace Pinker in the attack midfield position. He won't be a starter, but he will be someone I want to use throughout this season. The next player coming in for 2.2 million from Rosenberg, just adds a bit more depth in central midfield, is Rogda. And he looks solid. Again, now you stand after pay a little bit more for Norwegian players. Um, their nationality comes with a premium. But we brought him in. And then finally, Manuel Thomas from Higgins in Chile comes in. And he's only 18 years old. We picked him up for a million. And I think it's money well spent. He's going to play in our youth team this season. Just see how he develops. I honestly think he could be a decent looking player. No question about it. I'm interested to see how we will develop. We are continuing to use this tactic. The four, sorry, the three at the back, then three in defensive mid, a centre mid, two attacking mids and a striker. The squad was heavily rotated for last Friday, so ignore the actual stand lineup at the minute. But I'm genuinely pleased with how we are looking and how this squad is looking. I promoted a couple of people. Um, this is one of them, and he 
came through our intake. Now talking about the intake, look at this. So Gay Fossadar was the one we looked at and he can play right wing back, no question about it. Which means it fits into the tactic we are currently using. So I'm currently retraining him to play there. He came in as a right midfielder but he can play as a right wing back, 100%. So I am genuinely excited to see if we can develop him into a right wing back. And also, Mads Holmas can also play right wing back. So absolutely, insanely positive that we got two right wing backs who came through the intake. Then we also have a right back who technically could also train as a right wing back. So I'm really, really pleased with them three players. We also got a striker through who I don't think looks amazing, but does add some depth, as well as a central midfielder who, again, isn't amazing, but does add some depth. But I do think that Gay Fostal could be a future star for us. I do think he can develop massively. I hope the potential is high for him. Let me know what you think of him, but I'm excited to see how he develops for us. Technically, really, really good. Physically decent, mentally needs to improve work rate, etc. I am working on his endurance to improve his stamina and work rate because I think they are attributes I want to improve. I'm excited. I am excited. And it did mean we didn't have to go into the market so massively this winter. Now, in terms of the market, our recruitment focus is looking fairly decent at the minute. Um, Eastern European kids, we're looking at some 17 years or under over there. We are scouting the under-19 league in Norway at the minute. Southeast Europe, again, under-21s there we're looking at. Western Europe, again, under-21s. South American is under-21s again. African talent is under-21s. Norwegian kids, again, just constantly looking for Norwegians who we can pick up. South Europe, again, under-21s. And then Scandic is all over Scandinavia. Scandic, not the hotel, because there's a hotel called the Scandic. It's basically the reason. Now, you can see Mads Thomas is recommended to a player who could come up into the first team. But we just we have a couple who I just think have potential. If I find them, you will probably think the same as me in terms of these players do have potential to step up to the first team. Lynn Skoog is one of them. I think he looks really, really good. 17 years old, still on a youth contract. He's been with us for a couple of years now after coming through the intake, and I think he has a lot of potential to get some football this season. We have an attacker midfielder here in Mela, who also, I think, looks really, really good. Attributes in the right areas. I'm genuinely excited by a couple of players, and if I go back... To the, to the first team, we do have a central defender who, if I can find him, I think has a lot of potential. Here we are, Bergeson, who again, defensive midfield stroke central defender, sorry, and he's really, really good. I think in terms of defensive midfielder, he can slot in now. What do you think? Let me know. He's 19 years old. He came through the intake. I just see potential in him, and maybe I'm seeing something that isn't there. But I see potential in him. Now, one thing we do need to look at is Luis Diaz because I had a lot of hope coming into his second season at the club properly that he could be a really good player. And he's picked up an injury and he's out for the next two to four months. It's really, really disappointing. I had so much hope for him and it's just been blown out the water by that long-term injury. So he's not going to be back until the summer. It's upsetting, but hopefully he doesn't lose too much of his attributes. And when he comes back in the summer, he'll still be raring to go. That That's the hope. So in terms of how things went, we continued our Champions League group with a 3-1 victory over Eintracht Frankfurt, which was hilarious because Pinker scored two goals in added time. And the next day signed for Frankfurt. We then ended the group stage with a 3-0 defeat to Milan, but we did qualify in 16th place, which saw us go into the playoff round. Now, in this playoff round against Marseille, our first leg was away from home and got 1-0 draw with Scholby on the score sheet. He's looked better so far this season. And in the second leg, we went through 3-0 to beat them 4-1 on aggregate with Diaz, Jotten and Hjelsted on the score sheet. Diaz still was fit at this point. So in the round of 16, we were going to come up against Inter Milan. Now at home, we looked good, but just couldn't get over the line. And we got one all draw 
it was always going to be tough going to Italy, second leg with a one-all draw in the first leg. And unfortunately, we just weren't good enough. We lost the game 3-1 and never looked in the game. So, sorry, 3-0 with a 4-1 aggregate defeat. But getting to the round of 16 of the Champions League, I've got to be pleased with that. I've got to be pleased with our progression, pleased with our development, and pleased that some players are starting to look a little bit better. Um, I've got to say, Shelby has looked decent in pre-season in the Champions League. Just started to create a little bit more and started to look like he deserves that 29k a, a week, sorry, which probably a little bit steep, to be honest with you. Um, he does have a high value, though, which is nice. He has, though, during the last couple of international windows, not been getting picked for Denmark, which is good for me because he stays fit. Bad for his value. Players who are capped by the nation always have a higher value. Now, I did get asked about Jurgensen. Now, he just won the league title, Sogendal, so fair play to him. And he is going to be there for the rest of this season coming up as well. I do plan on bringing him back in towards our first team. He is an academy player and he is a good player. He's decent. So, I don't want to just let him go. He's going to have another season on loan at Sogendal where he did start playing a lot more near the end of the season. And hopefully he can play some games this season, then come back to us and be our fourth or fifth choice central defender and just wind down his career. Now, a couple of players to mention. Basic has announced that he's going to leave us at the end of the season on a free transfer. I have tried to sell him after he said that and no one would come in for bids for him. He's not going to be our first choice this season. Now he has said he's going to leave. I am not going to make him our first choice. He is going to spend the rest of this season watching from the sidelines. And another player who also has been kicking up a fuss recently is Bastions, who also does want to leave the club. Now, again, he has a long contract left. He has a couple of years left in his contract. Does he, have an, he doesn't have an extension, but... I don't want to sell him. He's so versatile. Play both wing backs, defensive mid and centre mid and attacking mid, really. I'm kind of just hoping if I just ignore bids for him, he might end up sticking around. That's pretty much my hope here at this point. If we ignore the bids, hopefully he will end up just sticking around. Um, one of the players I do want to put a lot of emphasis on this season is Jotten. He didn't perform how I would have hoped last season with only four goals in 23 games, valued of four million. If he doesn't step up, we might cash in on him because he's such a high earner at 10.75 and our wage, wage expenditure has massively gone up over the last year. If players like that and Sholby as well don't step up massively, we will cash in on them and just drop our wage, wage budget and wage bill down a bit because I'm not spending massively on players who don't perform. We will look for a new left wing back throughout this season if Shelby doesn't have a great season. So far, he's been decent this season, but if he doesn't step up, we will look to move him on. Now, finally, the last thing I want to point out is ahead of youth development. So, John Pedersen, who's been with us since the start of the save, he is the academy manager here at the club in real life. He has left, his contract was running out, and he didn't want to sign a new deal. So we've ended up bringing in a English head of youth development, uh, Lawson Tunnicliffe, who looks fairly decent. And my thinking now here is, if we have a foreign head of youth, we might end up bringing through some youth academy players who are from different countries in the world. So we're going to see how that goes. He is decent, so we haven't took a step backwards. So we'll keep an eye on him. We'll keep an eye and we'll just see how that situation develops. I still have, by the way, somebody did actually ask me, who is your assistant manager? And I was like, do you know what? I've had him for a few years now. John Turry came in 2031. He's just been our head of uh, assistant manager doing a really solid job. So I was a bit shocked that you guys didn't know he was my assistant manager. But yeah, John Turry, for people who did ask. Now, financially, we've done really well. We got 8 million for getting out of the group stage, 8 million for going through the knockouts, and 8 million for going out in the round of 16. So we now have 62 million in the bank. We have 20 million left to spend. We have double our wage budget available. So we don't need to sell them players who aren't performing well. But I'm just saying, if they're on a massive wage and they're not doing well, then I might look at moving them on. But I think that's it. I think that's it. Hopefully you're still enjoying the series. I've been Paul, Osnan's the Northman. 
stay tuned i honestly don't know the direction the channel is going to go in in terms of weekly content at the minute i am up in the air about dropping down the amount of videos i'm up in the air about bringing out some different content yeah family life means recording football manager content when you need to can be a struggle but we'll keep pushing on i've been paul us the north man and i'll see you next time